In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to give you some first impressions as I look at the brand new version of PowerDirector. It's marketed as PowerDirector 365 if you're a subscriber, or it's called PowerDirector 2024. So apparently they moved away from the number values to year values. This is a splash screen that you see when you open the program. It does have some nice things about it. On the middle, it does give you some of the most recent project you worked on, so you can click on them and immediately load them. It has some other tools it's highlighting that are available that you can see more of in the bottom part. And then it has some ads at the top part that I'm not too fond of. But instead of going in detail, let me move into the program. I'm going to load a recent project. This is one that is the first project I attempted to work on using the new version. And when you load the screen, immediately you notice some very big visual differences. They've gone to rounded corners. It's a more simplified kind of look. You don't have as many lines on the screen, uh, but you do have the same content. And so essentially it's been a major rework of the look and feel. Now, as it loads things up on the tracks, you notice everything too is color coded. My titles are this orange look. And then I have some other elements here, like these fireworks. That's kind of a bluish. And if I look over here, I have a title animation. And that's yet another color. And then you notice the video tracks uh, have kind of a orange, orangish, uh, yellowish hue to the outside of them. Again, they're all rounded. If you look in the media room, we have rounded corners on the videos that I've placed there so far. And in this case, I've got lots of things that I've tried to put on, experiment with, and most of what I've done work. I had a couple crashes in the first hour of using the program. I haven't had uh, what I would call an annoying number of them at this point. I expect that to happen for a while. You notice what they've done. They've taken the what we call the rooms, the title room, the media room, transition room, etc. And they've placed those in the top. So those are at the very top, right under our menus. And our menus are mostly unchanged from what they were before. So those are very similar. The other thing I've noticed is that when I look at these rooms, I'm trying to figure out where can I find something to do voice narration. And it took me a while to figure that one out. You have to be in the My Media room. And then you notice you have a button that simply says Record. For me, it was hard to kind of locate. When I click on that, that will take me to this. And this is where I can do my voiceover or voice narration. So if you want to go there, there's no separate menu for it. You have to pull it out of your media room. Let's look a little bit at something else that's different. Let's go for, to our titles, for example. And we have the, the familiar split pane where we have the categories on the left and then the elements on the right. And you can scroll up and down. One thing I miss, though, is there isn't one that gives you everything. You have to know what kind of subcategory something is in in order to find it. So if I don't remember where it, it was put, I have to hunt a little bit so I can find that particular element and then drag it and drop it in my timeline. And again, if I do this one here, I'll drag it and drop it down. And you notice it has a particular color. You will get this nag message here about it not automatically moving your scrubber or your playhead, your timeline indicator to the clip. And at least we can turn that off with don't show again. I'll leave it on for now so you see that it happens. But outside of not having a category that has everything under the titles or under the transitions, I, I like the look and feel, but again, I'm going to have to get used to deciding, all right, where is that? tool that I like. Now you can still mark things as favorites. When I get to the effects, you notice I have them again by category. And they've done blending, color presets, all my LUTs are in here. I'm going to click on this subcategory. And I can find all the LUTs that I have installed. And then there are style effects. And here's where we have some of our particles. And so if I want to take the magnifier and stick it on an effect track, which I added here. You notice it has a color of its own. Those are in green. 
turn that off. Then instead of the pip room, it has a container called overlays. And this is the kind of elements you'll see at overlays. Again, they're all very much in subcategories and you can't have all of them at once. You have to figure out which subcategory yours is going to be in. So again, there's going to be a little bit of searching. I wanted to do, oh, where do I do a sketch animation? Where do I do a box? Well, I, it's up here under sketch. And so I'll take that, drag that to a video track. I'll get my normal nag message here. And then I have to move the cursor over and I'll see that. And I can do all the things I could before with it. And then we have one for subtitles. We can turn our subtitle track on. And this is, gives me three options, speech to text, uh, create subtitles manually or import them from a file. And then we have a, a category for templates. We have intro, outro, countdowns, design, and this gives you all the templates you had before. I don't see a number of them listed. There used to be some, but uh, I'm not sure if that's something you can turn on or off. Again, I'm scrolling down and down and down, and there's a lot more than you would think in these categories, but they don't give you a count over here like they used to. But those are some of my initial impressions. I can't find anything big that I use frequently that is missing or anything huge that's new, but in subsequent tutorials, we're going to show you the bits and pieces of what's been added, what's remarkably different, and what's very useful and what's maybe worth a little criticism. That's first impressions of PowerDirector version 365, newly released in September 2023, and PowerDirector 2024, which is the same product, at least in its initial release. So welcome to the new interface, and we'll look forward to spending some time with you as we begin to show you all that you can continue to do with PowerDirector in the, this new interface.